Preparing to delve in three, two, one. All right, and we are back. We on never delve. left. We've we returned. have returned. <laughs> we have never left. You can't get rid of us. Well, actually, you kind of can. But <laughs> don't hit that pause button. No, 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 no. You wouldn't want to do that. Um, so, uh, essentially, we've gone through uh, stage one of the hero's journey, where we went on a departure. Stage two, where we went through initiation. And that's it. That's, that's, the, that's the end of the journey. You've, you've succeeded. Ray, you've, you've done everything. It's just going to be us not talking about it anymore. <laughs> no, we're just not going to talk about it. Oh! Wait, there is something else. There's, there's stage three. There's the return. And uh, the return is, not, is, is a little bit trickier probably to talk about just because it's not necessarily about the overcoming of obstacles as it is about what happens afterward. Um, and that's probably best explained in, in the first part. So uh, the first thing, first potential substage of return is the refusal of the return. Boy, there's a lot of refusing going on here. Yeah, it's just like it's almost like the same thing broken into three acts of different names. Yeah, and that there's there's a repeating structure to it that I, I refuse to call, and then maybe now I'm going to refuse the return. I don't know if that's necessarily true. Of... They just don't like being told what to do. You just don't like being told what we do. I don't want to go, and I don't want to come back. So anyway, exactly. the refusal of the return is basically... You achieved your goal, but your burden does not end. These gifts of the gods need to be returned to others so they can punch bears too. I'm sure that's exactly what it says. That's exactly what it says. I, I will actually use Campbell for this one to explain it because I think he actually explains it pretty well in this quote from, from the book. But when the hero quest has been accomplished, the adventurer still must return with his life-transmuting trophy. The full round, the norm of the monomyth, requires that the hero shall now begin the labor of bringing the runes of wisdom back into the kingdom of community, but the responsibility has been frequently refused. So this is basically the point <laughs> where after the actual battles take place, after the actual trials have been done, after you have won, you have to be able to go back. And a lot of people don't want to. I would say that a, a good example of this might be actually, let's go back to Ariel and the Little Mermaid. <laughs> uh, I would say the Ariel uh, being able to, you know, we've defeated Ursula. Yay. And you know, congratulations. And I do have an inner power inside of me. But being able to say that, yeah, actually, I think I do have to go back to the, the ocean. I do have to go back to the sea. And maybe explain to people what the what the outside world, what the what the world on land actually is. Crazy, it's it is. Dingle dingle hoppers everywhere. You don't want to go there. Let's form Atlantis and stay away from them. <laughs> <laughs> in in other sea related things, um, hey, let's let's throw Finding Nemo in here. That's that's one where like Nemo's life in the little uh, aquarium in the dentist's office might have been the end of his journey, but he knew that he had to go home. And, but he uh, had to become his father. He had to become his father. And his father had to go on the journey to retrieve him in the first place. And, but, and then, even though they were in a very nice area by the, time they, <laughs> by the time they end, now they have to return with the knowledge of what's out there beyond the reef. Uh, I don't know. Do you want to try and relate this to Aladdin? <laughs> Uh, I mean, the refusal to free the genie. That's Maybe. true. Is that would that consider? I mean, yeah, his quest would have kind of been over after Jafar's gone. He could have just ended, but there there is the possibility of the refusal the first time at least to free the genie. Um, but I don't know if we see this quite as often. Sort of like how you don't necessarily see the refusal of the call all that often in media, I don't necessarily think you see the refusal of the return as often, either. Um, maybe not, maybe not. 
The general refusal of characters to do something doesn't seem to move the plot along very quickly. <laughs> True. <laughs> um, so maybe, I, can... I wonder if Deadpool would be a better example of that. Oh, maybe. I'm but trying he, to think. That's that. an anti-hero, so that'd be the anti-hero's journey. Well, yeah, but I think it, I think that the structure pretty much works the same, uh, or at least at least it kind of does. Except that every single part of this would just have not at the end. A very loud and very annoying not. 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 It's a not, it's a not joke. Or great. Sporad. By the way, saying not at the end of something, great comeback and it's a totally valid argument every Absolutely. time you use it. 100% of the time, it works. It, it, it just works. It just works. Um, I think that you might be able to utilize it in a tabletop game. Sure. Uh, All right, you defeated the uh, the tyrant and installed yourself as like helping to uh, rebuild the town, but now you're not stepping down and you're just kind of becoming a tyrant yourself. Or the whole thing where I left my village so that I could go on this journey, and now I have achieved actual power and I have achieved and I have made my accomplishments. Maybe I don't want to go back to the village. Honestly, I don't know why you'd want to go back to the I village. don't know why either. Well, except that by going back to the village, you can take the understanding and the knowledge that you've accrued on your journey and bring it back to the people. Why would uh, you want to do that? <laughs> um, well, that's that's the whole thing. That's the reason why there's a refusal a lot of times. Because I guess that's might... why they're heroes and I'm not. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's why they're heroes and we're not. But, you know, the idea that, you know, we've we've achieved something and we might not want to go back and, and do that. But in a lot of ways, like a Frodo has gotten the, the rings in Mount Doom, the whole thing's over, Sauron's gone, uh, the, the, the heroes have won, and Frodo's there. And But Frodo might not have any real reason to, why would he want to go back to the Shire, except that now he has to tell the story. Yeah, but that's hobbits. That's what hobbits do. <laughs> Hobbits have a big thing about stories. They really Back. need to tell them. Way too long a story, by the way. Yeah. Really long stories. Uh, that's actually a good way to bring us to, and this one is a much easier correlation to Lord of the Rings, but the magic flight. Yeah, because so, you got giant eagles. Or a magic carpet. <laughs> yeah, or a magic carpet. Right. A gentle hand guides you back to where you started. So... Basically, or a magical hand. <laughs> so, a or basic... just a screen transition. Yeah, screen transition. You're, it's amazing what you can do with a screen wipe. Often, heroes give an assistance to get them back to where they originally were. Maybe they refused it, maybe they haven't, but they can't get home on their own. So, um, here's a Stargate. <laughs> Go yeah. through the Stargate. Here's a wormhole. Here's a wormhole, here's a Stargate, here's Warp Factor 5. Here, you can, you can get there. Some kind of, of magical transportation, usually magic. Uh, I guess it, I guess it could be also divine, or it could be technologically superior. Um, but uh, but there's some external force again, similar to the one that actually led you on that journey. That is also going to bring you back. Usually not the same one. I don't know if you've noticed that, but usually in stories that implement those, the the force that takes you on to the journey is not the same as the one that brings you back. No, I mean, if that were the case, then why wouldn't they just do the journey on their own? <laughs> yeah, yeah, or basically at that point, they're just a supernatural Uber. They're just, <laughs> they just take you to a place and then bring you right back immediately. <laughs> the one example I would give that actually is like that is probably Stargate, just because on every single one of your journeys, you take the Stargate in, and then you take the Stargate back. <laughs> Take the Stargate in, you take the Stargate out. Take, <laughs> take the Stargate, Stargate in. in, and you shake it all about. Then some ancient Egyptian gods get up in your grill. That's what it's all about. Okay, so so that's pretty self-explanatory. This next part might take a little bit of explanation. This is rescue from without. So if you can't self-extract, another agent comes to your rescue in a more direct fashion. Okay, this is actually more the eagle. <laughs> that, that's a, like, do sex machina. Deus Ex Machina, yeah, 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 yeah. In this particular case, it's kind of an either-or scenario. Either you have the magic flight where it's a gentle hand or, or a guiding light that's getting you back home, 
or you have the rescue from without where something literally just has to like grab you by the scruff of your neck and pull you back <laughs> out of of a, of a deadly situation that's more the eagles i think that's more of the rescue from without you can't do the self extraction so the eagles come in the magic flight is a little bit more like the um like if you're playing a video game and you can't remember how you get out of the dungeon you fast travel you, well, you wait, the, you have to get out of that strong. Yeah. <laughs> or the little the little uh, guide on the floor shows you the way out. Oh, so it's Navi. It's Lord, Navi. Uh, Legend of Zelda. Yeah, Navi is definitely a version of the magic flight. Hey, listen! And then you gotta listen to her annoying voice as you extract from the, uh, from the dungeon. Uh, the eagles, though, coming to Mount Doom, that's a little bit more of the version of Rescue from Without. I don't necessarily think I know a lot of examples, or could give you any examples, of both of those being used at the same time. Yeah. It's kind of an either-or thing, as far as I can see. That's pretty self-explanatory. Okay, so uh, the crossing of the return threshold. This is actually an important one. Uh, so you return to the start, okay, by, by means either of your own volition or not, you return to the start, but you can never cross back over, and then marked by knowledge, you are forever a different figure. Essentially, you've gotten back home, but your experiences on that hero's journey have changed you irrevocably, and you realize that. This, I'm going to go to the Odyssey for this one. I know you're so happy. But I'm, I'm going to go to the Odyssey for this one because uh, when Odysseus eventually does get home, he realizes that a lot of things have happened on his journey that not only changed him, but have changed the, the, uh, the country that he came from. And now there's a bunch of these suitors that thought that he was dead, and they want to get with his wife. So, so now he's got a whole new set of challenges in front of him. And uh, not only has he been changed, but the world that he left has been changed by his absence. This, this in many ways, is the kind of return threshold. You aren't, you aren't the same character you were at the start. Which, if you were the same character as you were at the start, I don't know if there'd be much of a hero's journey. <laughs> this is that point in the storyline where it's no longer about those external threats or challenges that you've been facing, but the, the hero themselves is dealing with the transformation inside. And if we didn't have that, there wouldn't really be much reason for the hero's journey as an experience, right? <laughs> True. I mean, if you're not experiencing change, why go on a journey to be a hero? Yeah, you don't usually see the whole thing where it's like, yeah, the character started in one place and then they end in the exact same place and they have gone through absolutely no character development. They're still just pushing mail. Yep, I've gone... <laughs> you know, what's interesting is that there is a certain level in a lot of stories of the character going back to a, a somewhat of a sense of normalcy at the end of it. Like in it, like, well, actually little mermaid kind of gets back to where she was before just armed with a lot of knowledge and experience. If we were looking at uh, like hunger games, actually, Katniss kind of goes back to her district, and even though the landscape, she, she's irrevocably changed the landscape altogether, she kind of goes back to her simple life, more or less, but, but the experiences that she's had up to that point inform her story a lot more, and obviously she changes, she, she has a revolution, so the, the literal, revolution, she, literal yeah, revolution. A, a literal revolution that informs her life at that point, but she can go back to a simple life, not worried about being under the yoke of the capital. A Harry Potter obviously goes back to somewhat of a normal life, maybe the, the kind of normal life that even his parents didn't necessarily have. Um, that's because I was going to say that's because his parents got killed by Voldemort. But that's because fine. of Voldemort. Oh, you told me! Oh, shit. <laughs> um, he who yeah. shall not be named. Voldemort. Anyway, um, but but his journey that freed the land from Voldemort is the reason why he can go back and live an actual semi-normal existence. That's because he died. <laughs> because because the Voldemort was gone. No, I mean because Harry died. When did Harry die? He died at the end. That's how they could kill Voldemort, and then they brought him back to life. 
And uh, Neville Longbottom is the one that killed him. Uh, not uh, Harry. Killed Voldemort. Remember? No, I guess I don't. <laughs> I, I remember Harry doesn't the... kill Voldemort. Neville does. That's that's a wonderful twist, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's great. Um, this actually brings us to a really important point, which is uh, of the return, which is the master of two worlds. So, uh, basically, you assimilate you, the hero of the story, assimilate no knowledge of the world without with old understandings of the world within. This is basically the merger of your life before to your life now. Uh, Odysseus kicks, uh, uh, you know, slays all of the suitors uh, and gets back to his old life, even though he has the experience of that uh, journey on the Odyssey. Um, this is the part where basically you are able to take everything that you've learned on your journey and assimilate it back into the life that you had before so that you can be more complete and more worldly in in the life that you have, uh, which we've kind of already talked a little bit about. But yeah, it Harry Harry gets to have a life. Katniss gets to have a life. Harry has children with the wrong woman, apparently. <laughs> Luke is able to go on to the academy. He's able to, you know, go back to a life that's... Uh, well, I mean, he continues on as a Jedi, but uh, also is understanding of the life that he had before he was a Jedi. So these these are, you know, important points to make that, you know, the experiences he had before this whole thing were valid, but you can assimilate all of the stuff that you did on that adventure back into your life. For Frodo, it's, I go back to the Shire, but now I can also write this grand story about... Um, the the Fellowship of the Rings and tell the story for future generations and eventually go off on whatever my next quest is. That very long boat ride he takes <laughs> off into the sunset. Uh, Hi-ho, Silver. Hi-ho, Silver! Which actually brings us to the final part of the return, which is also kind of integrated into that, which is the freedom to live. So, uh, through fire... And back again unscathed, you burn with a holy fire within the present and future. Yay. Yay. Campbell would put it as, thus the next moment is permitted to come to pass. That's what we're doing right now. Exactly. So uh, you get to the end of the journey. Um, you've been able to assimilate all of your knowledge. You've crossed your threshold. And now you actually get what could be considered the ultimate reward of being able to have a life afterward. Uh, the, the ultimate boon, essentially, of the hero's journey is is you, you now have a freedom to actually live. Katniss has, uh, you know, freed the districts from, from the capital, and, you know, Harry has freed the world of Voldemort, and uh, Darth Vader's gone, and Mount, and, and, and Sauron's gone. They're all gone, you've gotten back home, you've been able to have your own life, and you now have the freedom to do so. And congratulations, it, it was actually worth your time to go through the return after all. Hooray. Hooray. Um, yeah, I guess that in many ways, even though our story doesn't necessarily follow all of these uh, points. Or half of them. Or most of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the general... Uh, we, we should have we followed the hero's journey far better over these last, like, five years. Uh, years. Yeah, yeah. Totally should have planned that one out. We really should have planned this out better. Um, but... But our freedom to live is sort of the, uh, the, the end story. Like, we become the, well, no, we don't become a master of anything. We haven't mastered anything. That's important to note, folks. Yes. We've mastered nothing. Our journey, our journey has, in many ways, just begun. This is the start of a new journey. This is this, that, that transformational element um, that's talked about a little bit in the story, but it's sort of like I was talking about earlier where individual parts of a trilogy or a saga can have these different, you, you, you know, arcs of the hero's journey in addition to the whole thing. We're sort of at that part where Luke and the rest of the rebels are getting the medals 
except Chewie for some reason. Everybody's getting the medals for destroying the Death Star. There's still a lot more to tell of the story, but you you have kind of come to the conclusion of one arc. On to your next one. Would you say that's probably where we're at? Or do you see the it in The start of our next arc? Yeah. Yeah. We're, okay. we're at the start of something new and different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And we have the freedom to not necessarily live, but the freedom to be... To do Freedom something. from the Mad Adventure Society. Ah, uh, I never thought that we were necessarily under the yoke of the Mad Adventure Society. We were very happy to be part of that. Um, but, you know, that Freedom time from has... the label on iTunes. Freedom from the label on iTunes. Freedom from the, the uh, stigma of everything else that has Delve attached to it that might not be even stuff that we did. <laughs> um, yeah. To... To do something very much our own, that, that's, that's unique to us, much more unique than what we were doing before, I think. Yes. That's actually, in many ways, that's our learning experience. That's, that's our mastery of two worlds in some ways, because we take what we knew before we really started doing the show, take everything that we learned by doing the show, and can now apply it to something new. Yeah. That's us. That's that's who we are in a nutshell. Yeah. So, uh, so more than that, though, I would say that, uh, bye. I don't know. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, 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 uh, <laughs> uh, more than that, uh, even if it doesn't necessarily completely apply to us, um, the hero's journey is one of those things that I think if you're telling stories or if you're thinking about your own characters in your own games, um, it's worth knowing that this structure has existed for over 70 years and that this has been talked about because I don't know how many people... I'm always surprised when I talk about the hero's journey or I write something that uh, mentions it, how many people that are actually really creators that do this kind of thing are, are did not know about it. Uh, I think it's really useful. You may start to notice it in things you like, stories that you like. I would actually be interested if you happen to respond to this or get in touch with us. If you've noticed a more close approximation of the hero's journey in some kind of fiction that you enjoy, whether it be a television show or a movie series or a video game or a book, I'd be interested to know what kind of hero's journey you have seen that you liked. That's my call to adventure to you. No, that's our call to action to them. Remember, we media, it's call to action. So that they can have a call to adventure. Yeah, we're calling you to adventure on to the new show with us. That's right, because <laughs> we will be able to pick up some of this uh, when we eventually start doing TPK. This might be a topic of conversation that reverberates back. Um, oh, on that topic, Alex, you had another thing that we were thinking about talking about in relation to this, right? Ah, yes. We had somebody that mentioned doing something about the heroine's journey mm -hmm. as well, and neither Nathan and I were familiar with that beforehand, I guess. No. Um, no. Because apart from the heroine's journey, it is, it is completely different uh, structured storytelling uh, convention. So we might dive into that at a later point. Yes. Uh, when we are more knowledgeable about it. Yes. It, uh, it might also be the kind of thing that we have to have somebody come on and talk to us about. Um, that was a completely different author and it did happen a lot later than Joseph Campbell. Um, so I'm not as familiar with it, but it, it is, it is definitely a different thematic idea. Uh, but one that's probably worth digging into at some point. Uh, if that's something you'd like to hear about, let us know. I'd just be just a general poll of if there's, there's interest in the, the community to hear about that. And I guess on that note, uh, we have to end our hero's journey like we do every episode by telling you where you could go to find more information about the stuff we do. So... Alex, while Delve is still around, where could people go 
Well, Delve is still around. You can go to delvecast.com to find out, you know, all the stuff we're doing. All the stuff we're doing, and I'm sure that as we start leading up to Total Pebble Knockdown, uh, we will also be giving some more information over there if you're interested in seeing what is happening. We'll, yeah. we'll start directing you. Yeah. Um, also, make sure to check out our uh, Patreon. Our Patreon is is likely going to be the same Patreon. We're going to just change over some labels and stuff. and Rebranding it. We are going to be rebranding it, but you can feel free to check it out right now because all of that stuff that was previously on there for, like, exclusives and stuff, that should still be there uh, even after we, we go through the rebranding. So still worth checking out. Uh, I want to thank our Shane Level patron, Bonnie Ainsworth, and also for our Discord uh, patron, uh, Drunk Paul, uh, who is always here in spirit, usually when we're drunk. Definitely. Absolutely. 100%. Oh, yeah. Uh, so thank you. Uh, and of course, you can find us on the interwebs at those social media things. You can find me on Twitter at Citanium. I'm at EXP Limited, and our show is still currently at Delve Podcast, although that is either going to be rebranded, if we can do that, to being Total Pebble Knockdown, or we're going to make a new one for that. We'll we'll figure that out. Yeah, we, we might make a new one for that, but we will see where we are at. This is still stuff that's a little bit up in the air for us, but that's okay. We have a little bit of time to figure, th- figure out some particulars. Uh, yeah less time when you hear this but <laughs> but but we recorded this a little earlier than you're hearing it like 10 minutes 10 minutes 10 minutes we we recorded this 10 minutes before you're listening to it even if you were listening to this days after it was released don't ask us how we did that um <laughs> uh thank you for listening to the show thank you for going on the hero's journey with us and we will see you on the next episode there aren't many left but that's okay they're gonna be good ones thank you for joining us we will see you next time goodbye everybody bye